Well, Tony Early, I'm so glad that you're going to uh, talk to me on North Carolina Book Watch about Mr. Tall. And many of your friends in North Carolina um, worry that your presence, longtime presence in Tennessee, teaching at Vanderbilt, teaching and writing at Vanderbilt, uh, that we're not going to be able to claim you as a North Carolinian much longer. Well, I hope, I hope that day never comes, but uh, miraculously, it won't be too many years in the future that I will have lived in Tennessee longer than I lived in North Carolina, which still seems kind of appalling to me in some ways because I, even though I've, I've lived away more than I've lived here, I still consider myself a, a patriotic North Carolinian and Rutherford County is still my little patch of ground that I, that's the land of the imagination that I dwell in mostly. Well, of my do you life. like you li like that part of Western North Carolina because you grew up there, or because there are other things in it that set it apart from where you live now, or from other places? In, uh, in I've only recently begun to write stories about Nashville, which sort of makes me feel a little guilty in a way. But um, Western North Carolina—that's that's the part of the world that I know best. I, I know how people sound when they when they speak better than any other any other part of the world. So just I have a much more intimate knowledge of Rutherford County than I do any other place. Is, is there a, for writers, do you consider yourself to be an Appalachian Mountain writer uh, in a way or um, are, are you something else? Writers tend to get a little itchy when there's an adjective in front of the word writer. I, I have, I'm really ambivalent about being called a, a Southern writer. That's just much too big of a category to be, be well, useful, but, but I do, if I, if I have to have an adjective, I would choose Appalachian, that well, I would be an Appalachian. So you, you're, you um, brag about the sounds of speech in Appalachia, and I think kind of positively affirm that that's part of, that's part of your work. I, just, I think that, that people in my part of the world, they just, they like chewing on words. They like the, they like the way sentences sound and they sort of shape the way that they tell a story to bring in that, that, that wonderful Appalachian rhythm. Well, a lot of our musicians uh, who are Appalachian musicians kind of make their way to Nashville to where their uh, talents are exploited. And has Nashville become, with you there and with all of these uh, mountain musicians there, has it become kind of a mountain? Do people have talked that way in Nashville now? I've, it's sort of the, the, the station in a club is sort of the, the, the the central most important place of, of bluegrass now but uh, the, the day when most of the bluegrass musicians are from the mountains is is long past uh, you know really a, a great banjo player is as likely to be from california as as he is from you know cleveland county north carolina so the rhythms around um the grand Ole opry are national rather than regional well uh, mostly what's in the grand Ole opry is is, is not <laughs> it's not it's not bluegrass and it's just sort of very cynically created very slick product and a lot of it is, is actually recorded in 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 California don't tell me that don't tell me that and we have to stop if that's, but give me a positive message before we stop <laughs> well not all of it's recorded in California uh, <laughs> that's great well thanks for uh, affirming your your uh, heritage and your allegiance to your North Carolina background and also telling us a little bit about what it's like for a North Carolinian to live in Nashville. Right. Thank and you. Uh, thanks again. I'm looking forward to talking to you about Mr. Tall.